Where did we stop? Where? Right at the end of Totem Molinos, there was a hotel of sorts. Oh, Costa Some, del Sol. Hotel Costa del Sol. Oh, my God. Plastic palace. <laughs> Very small. Put the kids in there. And our first taste of Spanish food. And uh, had to get a bottle of milk for Scott, right? He threw it against the wall. Why? Because it wasn't milk. It was goat's, it was goat's mi milk. It was milk, but it was goat's milk. <laughs> Everybody was pretty rough and pretty sad. And I was wondering about the whole thing about this point myself. Well, it was about time. Well, I didn't see anything that was positive at all. And it all looked pretty rough. And the roughest part that obviously it had been settled by some tourists and whatnot, and it wasn't in a natural state that somehow or other I dreamed. So I wandered off with a vague idea. I was already out of here. I didn't think how I was going to get tickets, but we were going to Greece or the possibly Israel, which had been on our list. Or back to America? I never thought it. Never thought it. Didn't get that bad. Oh. Wandering into our Molinos, there was a little shop, and there were some English words on a sign, and that was Paul Stevens' mother's place. And I dropped in, and sure enough, I got an American, Paul Stevens, and he says, uh, what are you looking for? And I said, a house for very, very little money and so on. And I happened to have a wife and three kids and three animals along. He said, well, you're the a first. House, no, he literally said, you're the first, meaning the first family <laughs> that has arrived to stay here. Uh, and we started to look at places. You were back in the hotel with the kids. Uh, I could only imagine how that was going. Don't ask. We wandered out and we looked at a half a dozen places and just not a possibility and whatnot. And he had one more and he's driving up this dirt <laughs> road, what seemed a long way outside of town, very muddy, with still pouring rain. And he can't go any further in the car. And he points up above and he says, see that tower up there? That's the house. And I looked and it was a tower. I couldn't tell then. That was a tower full of, uh, of um, what do you call it? The ivy, the, uh, uh, anyway. Uh, it was standing in the hill. I couldn't see the house, but I could see part of the tower. Came back. And I said, I'm interested. I liked the remoteness away from any new building and so on. It overlooked the sea, I thought. Uh, and I put him to work on it. He called the owner and I went into Malaga. I actually was interviewed. It's a great interview because I couldn't speak a word of Spanish and they couldn't speak a word of English. And they must have been desperate and we got the house. And it turned out that the rent was $80 a month, which was far, far more than I had been led to believe that it would have to be. I thought we could live on $100 a month, everybody included. Anyway, that was it. You hadn't seen it. I came back and I told you. I said, hey, we have a house. You want to discuss what happened then? <laughs> so we... By that time, you had rented a little Seat, a tiny little car, and we piled in the car, and we started up a mud road, and we got stuck. Absolutely stuck, couldn't move. You got out, you had dressed for the occasion. Well, of course, I mean, you know, this was fancy. I was gonna see my new house. And I think you so had on something. I, I pushed that stupid little car. You got out and in way the mud much. with the wheels spinning and the mud going out all over you. So all of a sudden, my and, and orange, it still didn't go. My orange suit turned into a gray suit. Still couldn't get it out, and along came a couple of mules, and a campesino, an español, and he said, "Hola." And you said in your perfect Spanish, Hola, Hola senor. <laughs> he said, obviously, can I help you? He took care of the situation. He immediately came in and hitched his mules to the car at that time, as far as feelings were concerned. Uh, like nothing is Heavy going right. I was going to kill you. <laughs> All of a sudden, this 
act of generosity, and this man out of nowhere is in his not understanding a word he could say, but as gracious as one could imagine. And you put a smile on your face, and gracias, senor, I remember it. And off we went, and up to the house. And we come to the front of the house, and it's a huge house. I hadn't seen it before, as I say. I only saw the tower. It turned out to be, I don't know, what was it, 20, 20 what rooms? It was very big. It was big. Casa La Chopera. And we come to the front of the house where there's a huge pepper tree. And standing there are V-A-N-T-S. They came with the house. And they're standing in white gloves waiting for La Senora were, and Senor to arrive. They were more excited than we were. I said, what's this? I had no idea what was happening. And it turns out that included in the rent of $80 were these four people who worked for the house. One was an outside man and a gardener, et cetera, et cetera. And then there was a cook and uh, couple a, of maids a and... upper maid. But I think you kind of liked it immediately. In my orange suit with all the mud on <laughs> With all the mud. Yeah, it was a good start. The house was magnificent. Tell uh, me about your... 20-some rooms and four rooms of furniture. We had a little work to do. It was the beginning of what was to be 28 years of, of great place to live.